It's been a while since I've made a video, and there's no better way but to kick it off with a new marble sculpt. So let me show you what I made, and I'll go over everything I did to create this piece, including printing, painting, and lights. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know I love Marvel, and my favorite's always been the X-Men. I was a huge fan of the comics in the 90s, plus the cartoon was pretty epic. One of the most badass characters was the Phoenix. Now throughout the X-Men timeline, the Phoenix has gone through a bunch of changes, whether that be from good to bad, to even a team of Phoenix-powered characters. In a past video, I created a mini based on the original Phoenix, the one with the green costume. This time around, I decided to go with the Dark Phoenix, which is the red costume. So we now venture into the Dark Phoenix saga, basically where she just wants to destroy everything. And on to the sculpt. I use this amazing one created by Z Ronin, who published just recently. It's their take on the Dark Phoenix, and wow, it's fantastic. It's super detailed down to the mesh texture on her clothing, and it comes in keyed sections for easier printing. For this piece, I decided to try something a little bit different. And instead of creating a mini, I wanted to try to make my first larger statue, kind of like those sideshow collectibles. At home, I have an Elegoo Saturn. It's a large printer, but it isn't that large, so there were some size constraints. I printed this out at 250% the size. I've always wanted to create a big statue type thing like this, so this was a pretty cool experience. I printed this thing on my Saturn using Vroom settings, which are faster settings. It took about 30 or so hours in total in about four prints. The base was one whole print, the fire was in two, and the character fits all in one print. Now one really cool thing you can do to maximize the details of this print is you can add your support material only to the sections that kind of get hidden once you put it together. Meaning I only have to add supports to like those intersections of like the arms or legs that eventually get glued on anyways. It's very helpful to reduce the amount of support marks you make. Now I did decide to spice things up with this character and I added LEDs to the fire to make them really glow. For the fire and the base, I use hollow settings. The base I did at a 2.5 millimeter and the fire I did at a 1.5 millimeter. The fire was printed in a clear resin as well. I'll get into how I painted the fire in a bit. So let's talk painting. Now painting a large scale statue like this versus a mini is a little bit different, but you can use a lot of the same processes. The number one concern I had with this piece was the face. I wanted to make it as lifelike as possible. I also took the time to watch some videos online, specifically the sideshow painting ones. They are really helpful. I decided to primarily use an airbrush and ensure everything was really well blended. Also with this piece, I'm trying the new Army Painter airbrush paints. I've been a fan of the Army Painter line of paints for a while and decided to try these out. This uses a new triad system where they give you three colors to use as a base, shadow, and highlight. They even put the colors you need for the triad on each bottle so you know what to use. It's actually a really good idea. Overall, Army Painter did a good job of selecting these colors that blend well and really work. Let's take the face I painted and see how I did it using the system. For this, I started off with the Flesh Tone Triad. This is using Barbarian Flesh as the base, Nomad Flesh as a shadow, and Wildling Flesh as the highlight. This gave a really good foundation for the skin color. Now I do say foundation as you aren't limited to more colors. Since this is a larger model, I need a bit more shadow and highlights. So I added chaotic red around her eyes, ears, hairline, and underneath her cheekbones. Then I used a bleach bone very lightly to highlight her cheeks, nose, jaw, and forehead. And that's it for the skin. For the rest of the face details, I hand painted them. I used the red triad for the lips. That is pure red and carmine red and archangel red. I used a little black wash on the edges of the mouth, blending inwards to make it that darker feel. I added a very light flesh wash around some of the face recesses, like around the mouth, a darker wash around the hairline, but very thin and light, and then the eyes and teeth I used a grayish white called Gorgon Hide. For the teeth, I also added a faint red wash to color the gums in. The eyelashes are just a plain black. Now when I hand painted many of these features, I noticed that some of these airbrush paints don't work all that well with a brush. They're really super thin and meant for an airbrush. So I do recommend that you have another standard paint set as well to use with these airbrushes because they just don't cover as well. Lastly, I added a matte varnish on the face and then painted gloss varnish on the eyes and the lips. Now to the hair. This is where the triad system didn't work as well because of unique colors of actual red hair. I can't fault their system for this as it required just a unique set of colors. 
Pro tip, stay away from using red paint for red hair. I base the hair using Widling Flesh. It almost makes it look like the model is blonde at this point. I then added a few shadows using Chaotic Red. Apparently, it's my favorite color. I then used a mid-brown wash to accentuate the details of the hair. Now from here, it's still kind of blonde. So I take a red wash and in several thin layers, I tint the hair to a suitable color. To add a little sheen to the hair, I take the bleach bone and airbrush in very light sections. I wrap everything up using a satin varnish. On to the body, which probably was the easiest part. Now for this model in particular, most colors are simple. The only section that took a little bit more time was the body since there are separated sections and colors. So for the legs, hands, sash, and start of the body, I focus on the gold. To start this off, I use the yellow triad scheme. This is Daemonic Yellow, Incursion Orange, and Imp Yellow. Now this did turn out pretty good, but I wasn't really happy with the look. I wanted a more cosmic feel and I felt the shadows were a bit lacking. I figured, why not go the metallic route? I first took True Copper Color and used that to add more shadows and areas. Now one tip with metallics, you'll have to add the airbrush medium to them. They're a little bit thicker than the rest of the paints and this needs a little bit more help to get through the airbrush. Then I took the Greedy Gold Color and thinly painted all over keeping some of those highlights and shadows. Lastly, I used a gloss varnish to get as much shine and metallic color as possible. With the gold done, we only have two colors left, and that's the red and the black. For both of these, I decided to hand paint them because I didn't want to mess with the gold that I just did, and masking things off would just take too long. But since these are fairly large sections, hand painting wasn't too difficult. For the black, I used a matte black. That's it. I plan to utilize the shine from the satin varnish to give me the leather sheen effect. For the red portion, I used a slightly darker red, like dragon red, added a mix of red wash and dark washes on top, and then dry brush using a few lighter shades of red, like pure red up to a color that looked like archangel red. Then the red, as well as the black, were satin varnished. I kept the gold on the body a gloss varnish. And I have to say, all the pieces of this model were keyed perfectly and they fit together really easy. It was really well done and really easy to glue together. For the last parts of this work, there was the base and the fire. The base was really simple. For the base, I used a true copper to lay down some shadows and then gemstone color all over. It's a really pretty color. And then I use a satin varnish on top. And the fire might be the easiest thing you may ever paint. This piece started off clear and you want to kind of keep it that way so light can shine through. So you skip the primer and for this we only use inks. I used a yellow ink and painted it all over. I made sure my ink was thin so it didn't block light. Next I take a red ink and add it to the top of the flames or in areas you want to look further away from the start of the fire. And that's it. I coated it all with a satin varnish and moved on. To wrap things up I added the lights. I took these small battery operated fairy lights that have a bunch of different settings. They're actually pretty cool. Prior to printing, I added a large hole in the base to hide these lights. Then I drilled a few holes up through the base to where the fire meets the base. I make the same exact hole in the fire and then fish the light through both the base and the fire. Now with all the light projects I've done in the past, this work is tedious and this one is no exception. I had to make a few additional holes in the fire to help fish all the lights through. I used two LED string clusters to illuminate each side of the fire. One, because I wanted more light, but two, to make the lights less synced up and more random. So with the touch of a button, I can turn on and off my lights and change their patterns. Plus, they tuck inside the base to hide them away. And there you have it. Everything took about a week from print to finish. This is one exceptional model, and I really enjoyed painting something on a larger scale. Also, trying out the new Army Painter airbrush paints was fun. Let's look at some of my pros and cons with that. Overall, I think Army Painter did a great job making these paints in this triad system. I totally recommend it to any folks out there who want to try it at home. Check out the description in this video for a link to the 3D model file and to some of the things I used in this piece.